All right, guys, so last episode, we did like a real quick, down and dirty, just walk around this car and, you know, see what's going on. So in this episode of Pugliese Speed Shop, we're going to dig in a little bit more and uh, see what we really got to do to this thing. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, we messed around a little bit with this uh, 1984 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royale. I've got to say it like that. But anyways, we took a little bit, like a real quick look last episode. You know, just like a quick, quick walk around and kind of what you do when you go buy a used car, right? You look it over a little bit, but there's a lot of things we didn't do, right? I just real quick looked at what right away my eye knows it needs, which... Might have been what Norm did. I'm not really sure. But uh, two things. Guys, we never checked oil. That's like used car 101, right? Sure, it runs fine. Starts right up, drives. That doesn't mean that there couldn't be water in the oil, you know? Could be a bad head gas or something like that. You never know. Sometimes they run fine. We saw it was blowing a whole bunch of smoke. It's probably because it doesn't have the right carburetor on it. Again, we don't know. So... Stuff we got to look into. Um, the car appears to be completely rust free, but we haven't been underneath the car. There's that. Um, when I was backing the car out in the gravel over there, you kind of see a line drawn in the gravel. When I cut the wheel, it could just be because I cut the wheel, could be because the brakes hanging up. I mean, they stopped the car fine. I haven't been on the highway with it or anything, just around the house here. So it seems to you know stop straight, but. You don't know unless you pull, you gotta pull a wheel. Speaking of pulling a wheel, we'll see if those rims fit on the car. So there's a bunch of stuff, you know, it's, it's clearly got a lot of issues, which they all seem to be small issues, but we learned it on the hard body. We learned it on Le Mans. We learned it on probably every used car I've ever bought. The small issues quickly snowball into big issues. And next thing you know, you pull your hair out, you're pissed off. And you're cursing the car, right? It ain't the car's fault. Yeah, you got to look at yourself, right? You bought the car. Well, in this case, it was given to me, so I, I think I get a pass. But seriously, you bought the car. You did the, the research. You looked it over, whatever. So anything you miss is on you. You can blame the guy you bought it from. And unless you did something super shysty, it's on you. So let's try and not make all the mistakes that we've made in the past well, first thing first we'll go through the whole car especially since we're going to sell the car so for me if the car if i'm riding you know, i'm riding around a bucket i know i'm riding around a bucket i'll be prepared it's whatever but if i'm selling it you know it's like what's my name on there you know you gotta have you gotta have some integrity so so that's what we're gonna do i don't want to i don't want to pawn off a problem on somebody else let's get the car legit Somebody can enjoy it. Get another classic out there on the road, you know? All right, first and foremost, let's check this oil. You see it there? Yeah. Not bad. It smells like it's got some fuel in it. But it's been sitting, so that's, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry about that. A lot of people worry about that. That's just, just change the oil, you know? That's what happens when they sit for a while, bleeds down. Not a big deal. So yeah, clearly, clearly, needs an oil change. You know, she's a little dark. It says a little bit of fuel smell, but not terrible. So, no, no evidence of water. Don't look like a milkshake or nothing. So, no big deal there. And there we go. So, looking underneath here, it looks like this car was cared for. 
All right, I'll bring in for a little, a little closer look. Radiator looks either new or maintained. Well, new. Yep, replacement, see? It's been replaced, so that's good. Seems to be the right one, I guess. Ish? Sure. Uh, hoses look good. Everything like underneath the car, or underneath the hood, rather. Seems to be here, seems to be kept in good order. No crazy wiring things. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks is this guy right here, where, let's see if you can see this. When it comes back, it won't go full throttle, because see what it does there? It hits right there, right where, so, right there. And then this doesn't really seem like it's legit either. And that's what I think Norm was talking about when he said the carburetor wasn't right. They seem to have all the right vacuum lines hooked up and all that. I got an inline filter here that, it's filtering, so there's that. We could probably make that work. Maybe we'll try the car, the quadra, quadra jet that's back there in the um, trunk, but we'll see. Uh, so all the AC stuff was over here. You can see it's just disconnected. That's also in the trunk, probably because it didn't work and no reason to keep it there, I guess. Now this is what's weird. <laughs> when the engine's uh, when the engine's on, and I'll show you guys in a little bit, but you know. This, this belt does not turn at all. But anyway, you can see, it's not, over here. you see, the uh, alternator's not locked up, and that's what I thought it was at first. Look at this, you see? And then at this angle, straight different angle. Right there. That's the belt. That's this belt. This is kind of, you know, for the power steering, it goes down to the crank. So, the belts weren't maintained. Or maybe they were about to maintain them. Maybe that's why everything's taken apart. Not really sure, guys. Like I said, we don't have a lot of history. But, easy enough to fix. All right, guys, I take a little bit of what I just said back. We do have some history. There's a water pump. There's a box for a new water pump. So, that tells me that's why all that stuff was taken apart. So, not a huge deal. It's just, uh, you know, you kind of put the pieces together as you find them, right? Like I said, here's the AC. We got, well, we got the tornado. Forget about it, huh? That's like 20 horsepower. Um, and here's the old quarter jump. It, uh, yeah, looks like a quarter jet. So, I'm going to take a look at this thing, see if it's good. Um, I don't know, but, um, yeah, we'll go from there on that, but I mean, there's nothing wrong, you know, she's, I mean, this thing is solid, you know, it's all back here. Yeah, I got a little fish in that, all right, so we'll get this cleaned out a little bit, I guess, but, uh, power steering fluid, coolant, which we replaced the water pump. Why did we put some water pump? I don't know. Ah, see, there's, like I said, hoses look good, right? Here's the old ones. So, looks like they were trying to maintain some stuff. Uh, trans fluid. We'll check that when we fire it up later on. But, uh, all right, so a little bit of history back here that, uh, you know, tells a little bit of the story as to why things are the way they are. Maybe they just didn't ever finish the job. But why? So, I already looked through the car, obviously. Uh, you know, we know the interior is in really good shape. I mean, that's, that's minor right there. Run a vacuum through here, we'll be good. So there is no headliner, so that kind of sucks. And the air filter's in here, so yeah, that's just, that happens, right? One thing, uh, see the back, it's... You know, I threw a couple little parts back here, a little, little piece of ducting there, no big deal. But, I did find this. You guys know what the problem is? First of all, let me say, 
good on them for buying the book. That's something that not a lot of people do anymore. It used to be like the first thing you did. You bought a new used car, you went and got the book because you don't know what you're doing, right? I mean, like every car is a little different and all that. In fact, let me show you. I don't know if you guys paid attention in the back shop here. That's what this all is. Chilton's manuals, Haynes manuals, motor books. A lot of the older ones are uh, good for a whole bunch of different vehicles, you know, American made, whatever. And then we got some specific ones for cars I've had over the years. Usually, um, if I sell it, sell a vehicle, I, I give the book with it because I probably don't need it. I mean, even though I do tend to buy the same vehicle over and over again. But here's the problem, guys. This is an 84 Delta 88. This book, 84 Cutlass. Now, as much as I do wish this car was a Cutlass, and if it was, it probably wouldn't be going for sale because I love me a G-Body. Um, it's not the same car. Now, granted, it probably does have the same 307. I know uh, my brother had like an 84, 85, 86 Cutlass. Has a 307. Looks just like this one. Probably not a problem. Probably the same drive train altogether. But different options, different maybe different locations, that kind of stuff. So when you are buying stuff, make sure you're buying the right thing. Like I said, it'll probably work. And if whoever bought that book was well aware of the fact that they, it's a different car, maybe it worked for them just whatever they needed. Or, or maybe that's why they changed the water pump and stopped halfway because they didn't know, right? Now, granted, it's about to be 2023 here in a couple weeks, right? So you grab your phone, do, 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 Google whatever you need, and there's some clown like me on the internet telling you how you got to do it. As one of those clowns, let me tell you, he ain't always right, man. So having the book, all that is... And I learned this with the FXR. Kevin kept telling me to buy the book. I'm like, I got the internet. I'm good. And I screwed some things up, and uh, now I'm scrounging to find a book for one of the hardest motorcycles to find a book for. So, yeah, I probably should have done it when, when he told me to. Sometimes that guy knows what he's talking about. So, just something to be aware of. Uh, I'm going to throw this thing up on a jack, see if the wheel fits, see what the brakes look like, see what the knees looks like. Hopefully... No surprises. All right, guys, a couple things. Number one, um, make sure you break your lug nuts loose before you jack the car. Otherwise, you end up with, yeah, a jack underneath the wheel to keep it from spinning because I'm kind of lone wolfing it down here, so I got nobody to hit the brake, right? And if you remember from the last video, yeah, that's still not fixed. So no impact. No big deal. Because, uh, where's it at? Oh, there it is. We got this guy. So we're good. Couple things of note. A little concerning that there's two different types of lug nuts on there. So there's that. And uh, not concerning, but obviously somebody cared enough to try and tss, tss, a little chrome spray paint over the... Uh, they didn't even take the wheel cover off, though, <laughs> so you got it on the wheel. But somebody cared enough that they actually wanted it to... They're trying to make it look better. So there's that. Take it for what it is, right? All right, let me pull this wheel off and uh, continue on. All right, guys, got the wheel off. Uh, yo, everything's looking good, man. Look at, the, look at all the meat on that brake pad. huh? Forget about it. I mean, we've got some cobwebs. You've been sitting, right? Um... A little bit of gibbity goop going on there. I don't know what that is, but uh, I mean, surface for us as expected. And of course, you got your, you know, wouldn't be complete without a zip tie, but no crazy rust. Even like the brake hose don't look bad. Rotor looks, I mean, there's a lot of meat on that too. That looks newer. So I think our suspicion of somebody cared about this car still holds true. Let's see if these wheels fit. All right, so I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is, you know, I got good taste because with the right tire, 
Looks pretty dope. Bad news is, yeah, you already know, right? They don't fit. Even with all them holes in it, none of them line up. So, I knew I was rolling the dice. When I first saw them, Universal Fit, I was like, okay, sure. And then um, when I went to get them, the guy was like, oh, yeah, I had them on a Jetta. So, I guess that's what these lines were, like where they fit on his. Clearly, different bolt pattern from uh, a Delta 88 to a Jetta. I gotta figure out what else these will fit on. Maybe I can get adapters. Maybe I'll just get different wheels. I don't know. But the good news for now is this one's only flat on the bottom. So we're gonna throw it back on and uh, we'll be all right. Before we do that, let's slide underneath the car though and uh, see what that looks like. All right guys, we're under the car and uh, floorboards are solid as could be. Not bad. Uh, the trans a little wet, but you know, show me a Turbo 350 that's not, right? Good news is, it's been here about a week or so, maybe a little more. There ain't a puddle under this thing. So that's impressive. I think we figured out what's wrong with the uh, the exhaust there. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a hell of a repair there, so. Um, but... Floors in the back look great. So there's that. Little trailing arms there, huh? That's why she rides so good. But uh, yeah, solid. Solid, solid, solid car. So, um, yeah. I don't know if Norm did any of this, but uh, she's good to go under here. So that's definitely reassuring. Well, except for except for that little guy right there. Well, you have it, guys. That's like the basic stuff you want to look at when you're going to buy a used vehicle, especially one with age to it. I mean, when I say used vehicle, I'm talking about something like this. I'm not talking about a two-year-old car you're getting off a dealership. You're probably not going to climb under and looking for that kind of stuff. They got a Carfax, certified pre-owned. All that. It's not what I'm talking about, all right? I'm talking about when you find something on Facebook Marketplace and she looks like this, do your due diligence, get under the car, pull a wheel, check the oil, all that kind of stuff, because you don't know what you get. You don't know until you get home and it's too late, right? We've all been there. I know I've been there. You guys have been there with me. So we know Norm did a good job here. They, uh, they found a solid car, and from what we can tell, some nickel and dime stuff, she'll be getting down the road. But we're going to call this episode for right here. We're going to get some parts on order, and uh, yeah, this way we can get this stuff done and get her to her next owner. Until then, guys, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.